Well, thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Morning Express live on ADBN television. And we're looking to review Nigeria 25 years of unbroken democracy. A lot of persons will tell you, without a people's parliament, then you have no democracy. Because it is the bastion on top which all the representation and yearning of certain constituencies are presented at the legislative arm of government. Now, joining us on the show this morning is Senator Eteng Jonas Williams, who is also the Chairman, Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream. Good morning to you, Distinguished. Nice to have you in our studios. Good morning and good morning, Nigerians. Uh, now, it's coming at a time when the current leadership of the National Assembly is marking its first year in office. We've heard the catchphrase on common leadership and legislative diplomacy that has been one of the most re-echoed thoughts of many Nigerians who have looked at the 10 Senate as one that has had the interest of the people at mind. How has this been possible under the leadership of the current chairman of the National Assembly and president of the Senate? You've not added the other one. The very first. The very first. The very first. <laughs> the very first and also internationally the very first. Even at the, IP. the IP. So um, the leadership of the Uncommon Transformer we started from when he was a commissioner, a minister, a governor, and now the Senate president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has really shown. He shows this is 25 years. 25 years, this man has been involved in the Nigerian project. He has been involved in the Nigerian pro project, both as a commissioner of local uh, chieftaincy at the local government level, at the state level, he has also been involved as a governor. He has been involved as a senator, the very first senator, first time senator to be in the leadership. Meaning, he has a lot of experience. For us in the 10th Senate, we are enjoying that leadership. We are beneficiary of that movement from the state to national now. The legislative wing is being the beneficiary. Now, quite notable, even when we look to introduce this topic, you highlighted the global perspective upon which the leadership of the National Assembly is perceived. He's also been elected into the Global Executive Council at the IPU. The I'm very not, first Nigerian. The very first Nigerian to do yes. so. Uh, beyond which, he also moved to make a statement not only for the interest of Nigeria, but for the interest of children around the world, the world. with the issue of the war that has torn up most regions of, of the world. Such a person uh, has exemplified beyond political leadership, the leadership that we require, the very smallest unit in the society and the family, where people say if we get it right, then we can build the Nigeria of our dreams. How important is this as well? Very important to us as a Nigerian. He made a statement at the international level that made us so proud. It takes guts for a leader to make such a statement on the Israeli, on the uh, Palestinian, the, after the Gaza crisis. He made a statement that the whole world, and made so many countries, even the ones that have gone to court and back, to say, yes, this is the kind of leader we want, that can take a decision, that can say a word, and look the leaders to the face, and say, I mean, you're talking to the leaders, it takes cuts for such a man. We don't joke with that. And we are lucky that is our leader. A leader that has built the 10th Senate to be corrective. If you check every government policy, I've been a number three man in the state levels, and I know what it is. This man has been very, very instrumental to so many policies we go that are going on in Nigeria today. We come up with projects, programs, policies. He don't mix words. And the way he handles the Senate. It will interest you to know that if you listen to our debates and how they are being moderated, you will know that yes, this man is a man of wealth of experience. Now, let's, let's talk about some of the activities that takes you all out of the hallowed chambers. We did see a visit 
led by him we also saw you amongst the entourage that visited the dangote refinery and beyond the legislative duties you have of coming up with bills we've seen on the ground engagements with key private investors in nigeria especially for a sector that you happen to be a chairman of petroleum upstream can you further tell nigerians about some of the outcomes of that visit in terms of what you saw on ground and the state of activities at dangote refinery for us this man led us for an oversight function, which is one of our legislative practice, one of our key cardinal <laughs> activities that we must carry on is oversight. Going to Dangote, he don't want to be told. He needs to see. And what he saw, if you listen to his interview, he came back and told the world that, yes, we are getting there. Let us be patient as Nigerians. Things will be better very soon. We are trying to get there. And what we saw on ground in Dangote Refinery proved to us that yes, it won't be long. The issue of imports of fuel and the rest will be a thing of the past. Led by him as the president of the Senate. This is an oversight sanction that was supposed, let me put it, be done by uh, the downstream committee, but here the leadership of the house showing how serious it is. He gave his words and he kept to it. Now, also talking about the state of Dangote refinery, we heard the comments, would hope to revisit them soon. He said one thing that stands out is the fact that beyond what the NMPC does, Dangote refinery has a 21 day reservoir. So, yes. should we not even have imports? The refinery can take care of Nigeria for about a month long. How important is that in terms of where we are going to in the hopes of Nigeria becoming a nation that is self-dependent? What it shows is, what that implies is, for 21 days, I think it's 21 or 31 days, we can hold our own, even if NNPC is not important at that particular time. Scarcity will be a thing of the past very soon because we have a reserve from a Nigerian company that will be equal to the tax to handle and hold on to it until NNPC maybe recovers whatever they've lost or whatever they are doing. But for them to hold that space for 21 to 31 days, that shows that yes, we are on the right path. Now, now let's leave petroleum away and then let's come back to you. And let me also tell you, yes, sir. recently on the bid rounds, I represented him in Miami where we sold Nigeria. There are 12 oil blocks that we're trying to see if the international world will buy in. We're giving it a legislative backing. The international community respects it. That shows that, yes, we are not only leaving these things to the executive arm, even the legislature are involved and that brings confidence on any investor that is coming to Nigeria. So that's one of our achievements. Now we'll, we'll come back to oil in a bit, but let's now talk about mm. your constituency. I, I happen mm. to have the privilege of being in Calabar when you were uh, at the third position in the States and the House of, uh, House of Reps in Calabar was under your watch. Is a constituency that you frequently visit. Let's talk about that because even in the 10th Senate, you have also talked about bills in terms of the inclusivity of Calabar persons, especially when we look at the challenges with the IDPs in Bakasi local government yeah. area as well. Has there been remarkable progress in terms of the legislative interventions in ensuring that such persons are taken care of? Legislative interventions, yes, but actions from the other side of government that's what we are waiting for and i've seen two letters sent from our committee on the legislative compliance sent to the relevant agencies i think very soon something will be done now, now, now the people of cross river also hold a place a place of pride in nigeria when we talk about one of the states in nigeria that has prided itself as being one of the cleanest not at just the city level but the entire state and the agricultural potentials of the state as well it is one of those prides of Cross River. Aren't the current leadership of uh, a governor who also had the privilege of being 
in the People's Parliament, we're seeing some remarkable progress coming about. Can you tell us more about that, sir? Prince Basu, too. We call him the Sweet Prince. And it's uh, matters of people first. Not only looking at it. If you go to Calabar now, there's a difference between two years ago and now. Calabar is back. The streets are clean. You can't find a pothole. I experienced only this in Aquabom State. When the Senate President asked me to go around, anywhere I see a pothole, he will give me $10,000. <laughs> and I went around and I did not see any pothole. But presently, my governor, a few weeks ago, told me the same thing that I should go around Calabar. If I see a pothole, I should come and report to him. That is an improvement. And that is a way to go. So I'm so happy with him. If we continue this way, I think we will do better than Aquaibo very soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's uh, one of the prides of place, especially when you talk about the Aqua Cross region and what it is doing in terms of mm -hmm. our tourism potentials to the other parts mm -hmm. of Nigeria. Now, we've mm -hmm. seen the executive arm of government under President Bola Metini will also begin a project that a lot of people had clamored for before now. The Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway. To That's start from Calabar. To start from Calabar. <laughs> How significant is this? To us, you know, as a Nigerian, let me speak from that point that we are like uh, doubting Thomas's most times. We feel if you start from Lagos and after Lagos, <laughs> we will not see this road again. So when the Senate President made that speech and said, Please, let this project start from Calabar. We, I was jumping from where I was. And when the president made his speech and said, Minister, this project must start from Calabar. To us, and that entire South South region is a plus. We're so happy. At least, let it start from Calabar. I'm not saying it will stop, but we are very confident that if it starts from Calabar, that project will get to Lagos very soon. But if it starts from Lagos, for us this side, we are still doubting. But although for me as a person, I believe in this government, and I believe that President Bola Metunubu, and the Minister of Works, who I happen to know so much, is a man of integrity, who will keep to his words. And then with the uncommon man, very close to them, they will finish this project. We will do proper oversights and this project must come to an end. Maybe before the end of this administration. But don't forget, government is a continuum. It's not all the projects will start, you finish. The next government will start and continue from there. That is why even the Senate President, a few days ago, spoke about the incremental and government, that a project we must come up with a bill. I came up with this similar bill in Cross River a few years back, but it did not see the light of the day. Where you must finish a project of your predecessor before you start your own. Because this is a government fund. This is a government fund. Taxpayers' money that are being put into this project. We must finish them. Not irrespective of who is at the top of the leadership few weeks, I think last week, the Senate President talked about it also. I was so happy. And as a parliament, we must and we will ensure that you finish your projects, especially the key projects, major projects, that you put in money. You don't just abandon projects because you want to start and make your own name. No, I don't think it's right. We must, as a people, ensure that government is incremental. We ensure that what you started will be completed by your predis, your successor. By so doing, we will not see abandoned problems, projects all over. Now, now just to buttress your point <laughs> that this is indeed a leadership policy of the 10th Senate, yes. we also saw the attention given to the FCT. Oh my now, God. Whilst <laughs> The current minister of the FCT, Bryson Yeson Wike, was applauded by uh, Senator Gautil Akpabi on yes. completing projects started by his predecessor 17 years ago. We've also seen consideration for 
a supplementary uh, appropriation, bill, yeah. appropriation bill to encourage the work he's doing. Can yeah. you shed more light? We, on this? we passed uh, on, uh, on on Tuesday. That's correct. We encourage him. Abuja is turning to a different city, and we are all happy. It took me just 10 minutes from my house to get to this place. That is not so before now. The roads are good, the roads are clean. You know why? The uncommon man is a Mr. Project. So when you see your son <laughs> doing projects, you will encourage him. And I encourage and also applaud President Tinubu. That confidence he had on Governor Wiki shows that yes, if you work hard, I will encourage you. If you do well, we will promote you. And he was promoted and made the minister of uh, FCT. Not because either FCT is bigger than the state, no. But he feels you've done well in your state. Come and do well here. Come and do it for Nigerians. And he's doing very well. And I don't see, and, and I don't see why the Senate president all the time is with him, advising him because he himself I mean, if you go to Akwaibom, you will applaud the Senate President. He changed the narratives. I was, I come from Cross River. I know what Uyo and the rest <laughs> were before Akwaibio. But after Akwaibio, bros, I think even most of us are looking for houses then. And <laughs> Quite interestingly. Now, there's also something that the FCT minister mentioned, which to me is key. He talked about the unfettered access he enjoyed to the National, National Assembly. Assembly. He says even at 12 midnight that uh, your extinct colleagues opened their doors to him to discuss ways on which the dividends of democracies can get to the people. Uh, is this something that has also been intentional on what has constituted... Well, it's a the policy of the 10th Senate. Senate. Okay. From leadership down. If you see your leader doing something, definitely you have no reason to put a stop or a block or the stop guard for such a man for the interest of the people don't forget he is not saying i want to do this for myself but for nigerians and then the ball falls on your table you must ask to encourage such a person in doing so and then you look at your leadership anything that has to do with fct there is a speed <laughs> that you see the leadership getting involved because, too, let our leaders, our ministers, leaders and captains of uh, agencies and industries, always engage our leadership and their representative. Once you do that, we will be on the same page. Anytime you bring anything, already we have a foreknowledge of what you're bringing. It will help in the passage. It will help in us shaping such a policy <laughs> now talking more about the people especially with delivering the dividends of democracy it is on the angle of interaction with the ten senate uh we also had uh, your colleague senator adara modu come present to nigerians a, a magazine never in the history of the national assembly have we seen projects and activities captured in print for people to be able to access and say this is what our federal lawmakers have been doing over the last one year. Can you also highlight some of this? It's a product of the current leadership of the National Assembly. I said before, so many things first, first, first. When you have a leader that feels records should be broken all the time, you get the results. The magazine, for the first time, you don't need to be told what the Senate is doing. They are in print. You look at it from that point of view. Read it. See it. Even tomorrow, when we leave the Senate, the copies are still there. History will still be kind to you. They've not captured everything. But I'm sure the next edition will capture more. That is a function of the leadership of the Senate. Well, it's an interesting conversation this morning on Advocate Broadcasting Network, ADBN TV. As we look to review the first year in office of the current National Assembly, the 10th Senate, and beyond which is not just the Red Chambers and Green Chambers, 
is also from a constituency level representation for Nigerians in the 10th National Assembly. On the show this morning, we have Senator Eteng Jonas Williams. I will be right back after this short break to give you more insight on legislative interventions of the 10th National Assembly and effective representation as envisioned by its leadership under Senator Gotu Akpavio. Stay with us. Well, thanks for staying with us on the program this morning and we're discussing a review of the first year in office of the leadership of the National Assembly in Nigeria, a commonly called the People's Parliament. It has now been even further christened as the Uncommon National Assembly under the leadership of its chairman, who is also the president of the Senate, Senator Godswill Akbabio. Now we have with us the chairman of the Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream, Senator Eteng Jonas Williams who would also be further buttressing some of the leadership policies of the 10th Senate in regards to oversight functions. And we cannot mention without uh, re-emphasizing Nigerians who are clamoring to see refined products of petroleum, particularly PMS. We've seen Jet A1 fuel, we've seen mm -hmm. diesel from Dangote Refinery. Uh, we're going back to that discussion with the visit to Dangote Refinery, particularly because you have said it, other than leaving it for just the downstream sector, the leadership of the 10th Senate said, even the upstream sector, which you're chairman of, and the entire members of the Halo Chamber need to go and see for themselves where this project is. And I uh, would like for you to also tell us some projections going into the coming months, because we have uh, promises from Dangote himself that come the end of July, he can be certain that uh, this will bring about some reduction in the cost of fuel as well. Yep. I listened to him and I think he has said it all. And two, I have the opportunity also visiting the refineries, the three. And I can confidently say something is being done. I was in Port Harcourt, and by the grace of God, if from what they promised us between now and December, December 8th or 12th, or thereabout, they should be able to give us our products from there. Then we also move to worry. Worry for me is not. like what we saw in uh, Port Harcourt, but work is ongoing and then the Kaduna refinery. So for me, if you, if Port Harcourt is on, Dangote is on, Wari is on, then we are set and ready to go. Yes. Scarcity will be a thing of the of past. The past. Uh, now the, also ch the other challenge too is also in the relationship with marketers. O -o Over time, we've seen agitation by some independent marketers of petrol in the country on what they expect on the part of government and even by extension, the legislature to be directing an uh, uh, ease of doing business in the country. They have been interested in the issues of how even small good fuel within Nigeria is leaving the shores of the country to uh, boundary countries where they are even sold at a higher price. Price, yeah. Like we were told that. Uh just across the Cameroon, I'm from Cross River, and it takes you less than five minutes to be in Cameroon from uh, Dana Rail, from Ecom and Boki, even from uh, Obanliku. It takes you. I mean, you have the next community being the Cameroon, and if they said they sell fuel at uh, I think two thousand. Two thousand, yes. You know, two is about us as a people, as a Nigerians. Let us also be disciplined in their own business. If there is a policy that don't take these things across, no need to smuggle. Let us stay here and solve the Nigerian problem. As a patriotic citizen, please, as a Nigerian, let us stay here. Let us sell these things here. If this product is meant for Ecom, take it to Ecom. It's not in wood that will tell you take it to Cameroon or you don't wait for a policy to stop you. You as a person, what is your contribution to the Nigerian project? We have to be disciplined in ways of doing business, including not taking our products out. Let us solve our problems first. Do it legitimately. If there's a process for you to take it across, go through it. But if you want to do it from the back door, I don't think you're helping this country. 
to me that is an economic sabotage now, now I, i'd like for us to even dwell a little bit further on cross river especially since it is a constituency you present in the 10th senate uh we also have information this morning which would have on the screen in infographics the government of cross river state and the ministry of solid minerals right. under dr Dele Alake have talked about ways to also strengthen mining operations in the state and have uh, legislative bills that prevent for illegal mining uh, we'll see those images on screen shortly but uh here we find that uh, the governor senator prince basio too and the minister of solid minerals with the pledge to address illegal mining in the state uh, let's take a look at some of the details of what the federal government is looking to do with the government of cross river you find the topic there fg cross river dippens corporation to address illegal mining we're told that the federal government and cross river states is enhancing a collaboration to sanitize the mining sector in cross river states and uh, this is also to help strengthen security in the states where we've seen issues of insecurity tied to illegal mining across not just cross river states but other states in nigeria uh how do you commend this initiative as well i commend because i have a bill in the 10th senate the, on the mining act amendment coming from cross river i've seen what's happening in biase what's happening in uh, obanliku and other areas i felt no the only way to contribute my quota is to come up with a legislative instrument which is a bill or a motion but i feel the bill is stronger motions are persuasive bills are stronger. Are stronger so i came up with that bill to strengthen it and then with my government you know discussing with the federal government applauding and also applaud the federal government there is need for us as a nation to look into that sector we've had a lot of problems mining this mining that gold i applaud the there's a bill in the 10th senate on gold we can have our forests we are trying to see how we will sell this sell that to make more money for nigeria and yet the miners, you see foreigners coming to Nigeria illegally to mine. That is not the way to go. There must be a straight way. And that is why for us, the only way to solve it is by legislation. We come with the legislative instrument. Then also, there should be also be a political will on doing it. We must stop this act. For us in cross river states, even when I was a speaker, we tried to, and with what I'm seeing, is further, which I applaud, and for me, it's a move in the right direction. Well, the other challenge here is there's a lot of legislative intervention and action currently ongoing in the National Assembly. But one challenge with uh, your, your your leader has also talked about is the information gap. How best can we bring these legislative interventions to the greater nigerian public so that they know that their representation is effective one we are in a media world where media sells anything it's not left for us to catch in then two i know that the 10th senate we just talked about the magazine they are doing everything possible to see how Nigerians will understand because of the way it has always been people a lot of Nigerians if you interview them they've lost faith in what we are doing so we have to again sell ourselves back to them how do we do that the media and then you have to do your legislative oversight you do your town hall meetings you meet your people and explain to them you should not be a that the member or a senator or the legislator at the state level by staying only in the state capital you have to touch base it's expensive but you must touch base each time you have opportunities go home. go home i'll give you an instance i will be home on saturday i'll leave this town i'll be in my state and if I'm in my state, I go to my village. I go to Cross River Central. You must reach your people and 
if you reach your people, forget whatever, then explain certain things. This is what government is doing. This is what government is doing. This is our own action. This is what we are trying to do. Whether they listen to you or not, keep pushing. One day, they will listen. <laughs> well, we must appreciate you for granting us audience this morning. Uh, we're hoping we can also get uh, a message to uh, the 10th Senate as they mark their first year in office. Congratulations, 10th Senate. And let me say it all. The Uncommon Transformer. Who is our leader? Sir, thank you. Thank you for having confidence in most of us, all of us. We are proud of you. You're doing well with your leadership. We've never had it so good like this. I'm speaking from experience as a former speaker and a former presiding officer of a legislative arm. Sir, you've done well. Keep it up. Keep believing in us. Even when you've given us a lot of responsibility, not minding whether we are first, second, or third timers, you give us that confidence. You keep building us. We believe in you, and I'll say God will protect you and your family. And I also thank our distinguished sisters all that are doing also greatly, led by your leader and the uncommon mommy general. <laughs> thank you so much for all that you people have done. And thank you for my boss. You've been a great mentor. Well done. Well, thank you very much as well. We wish you the best in your legislative duties in your time at the Senate. We thank you so much. And thank you, Nigerians. Keep believing in us and keep believing in Bola Metinubu. This government, we will get it right very soon. Well, this is where we draw the curtains to a close on this interaction. Be reminded that you can re-watch it on our YouTube channel.